Now for business updates across the African continent, Rotus Udiri joins us. Good morning, Rotus. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning, Ayo. Good morning, uh, Rufai. Yeah, so this president is keeping us on our toes uh, as far as trying to catch up with all the news. So um, I think we're looking at point number, which one is it? Four? Yes, liberating the, uh, the uh, exchange uh, rates, although there should be point number five, which is the... Uh, EFCC had been removed, so we got <laughs> we got the um, we got the um, uh, F the, the news yesterday that the central bank had put out a notice um, to the banks that the naira is to trade freely. Stock exchange reacted. Uh, so now we've got like the two consecutive bull runs on the stock exchange. Now, I think it was up by about 3.13% yesterday. And uh, we're up to seven. We're on Monday, or was it Tuesday? So we're, the year to date return was about 13%. And now jumped now to 17% is our year to date return. All share index is at a, in a 15 year high. So, but then this was when the, the news came in. So now we have the um, banks. Tell, and being told by the central bank that essentially the Naira can trade freely on the investors and exporters window. Remember that the central bank has always been the invisible hand that's been you know, essentially controlling the rates uh, on the INE window. INE window, if you remember, was introduced in 2017 and, um, and you know, it was supposed to allow for the free trading of the currency. This is the operational changes to the foreign exchange market that, they, that the circular that they put out confirming this. You can see there, abolishment of segmentation. All segments are now collapsed into the investors and exporters window. Applications for medical, school fees, BTAs, business travel allowance, person, P -P -P PTAs, personal travel allowance, SMEs, they're gonna to continue to process through deposit money banks. But all that one way is this window here, that window there, that's all collapsed. Now this is key here. Um, reintroduction of order-based two-way quotes with a bid-ask spread, basically a one naira. That means the difference between what's being asked to buy and sell should be one naira. Then it, this is very key, and I'm going to get to this when I get to daily trust in a second. The reintroduction of the order book to ensure transparency of orders and seamless execution of trades. So if Doctor puts in a trade and Ayo puts in a trade and Rufai puts in a trade and Rotus and every Mr. Ifeni puts in a trade, the order book will list everybody's bids. Because yesterday we had a bid that went as high as 790, right? Now, the INE window closed at 664 and I want to tender an apology to the Daily Trust because they have been vindicated with their initial story and I will explain. This is back on June the 1st or so where they said the CBN devalued the Naira to 630. CBN now came out under prior leadership calling it fake news and pulling, the, bring, you know, pulling their reputation in disrepute. They actually came out and defended their position and said that you know they stand by their story and I'll explain why. The INE window rates closed at 664 yesterday. Remember that the Daily Trust said that it had moved to 6.30. Now, I came on and said, well, they didn't understand the market because I was looking at the closing rates at the end of the day, which was still 4.71. But what the Daily Trust said was that they stood by their story. The people that they talked to who were traders on the i &E window said that the rate was at 630, 635, 640 levels throughout the day. So what was happening was that because the CBN at the time was the invisible hand moving the rates the, and the business day, and shout out to Mr. Ifeni because he came on that same day and defended the Daily Trust and Mr. Ifeni also brought up the Daily Trust uh, Business Day article that said the rates were trading at 600 Naira levels throughout the day but by some magic they would close at 471 at the end. So I saw 471 at the end of the day and said well what's the Daily Trust talking about? The fact that the INE window has now closed at 664 which is what's the what? That's something Naira different. Yeah, yeah, of course. Done, yeah. Shows that the, those trades are what were moving and so this is the essence of a free capital, a free market. If you allow, the four of us can be, this, this table can be the INE window. Mm. Doctor comes in, he's an investor. I have dollars, I want to sell. Ayo says, oh, doctor, how much do you want to sell it for? Ayo says, I'm going to buy at 6.30. Rufai says, I'll buy at 6.40. I say, I'll buy at 6.25. Doctor chooses who will sell to. It's, any, it's like going to a market and wanting to sell a phone or a pair of shoes. The market determines the rates. But then, the invisible hand, which prior to this liberalization, of the exchange rate now comes in with the most supply and then you know puts the rate down and gives us 471 in order to maintain that artificial rate of 470 and 460 something that we've been seeing for a while so now this is supposed to hopefully 
uh, investors with, if they see that we have a transparent rate, if they see that they have you know a rate that is that is a single rate, they will hopefully come back into the market. If you remember what the president said about wanting to bring in people and bringing um, liquidity into the market, allowing people to repatriate their funds, so on and so forth. So it's a it, it's a it's a major update. It is part of what um, the president said should happen. And now the key thing is this. All because, just because the INE rate now is liberalized does not mean that dollars are going to appear overnight. We still have a dollar scarcity issue. Yeah. What needs to happen now is that essentially we need to, this, this rate needs to be defended. Supply needs to increase. That is yeah. just the, the and, beginning. And, that with and the Right, productivity. Um, you saw the president talking to security chiefs. The oil, um, oil theft has to end. Uh, OPEC has confirmed that our production has increased to 1.3 million. We got to get to two, two point something higher. The president wants to get to 4 million by 2027. We'll see how that works out. But Again, as far as signaling to the markets, the NGX liked it. Nigerian bonds in the international markets are doing well. Um, there's an NGE um, ETF, exchange traded fund, that focuses on Nigeria. That's been on the up and up. So, so far, so good. It's just this needs to be maintained with action. So, Rotus, I totally disagree with you about daily trust, and I'll tell you why. Okay. When we do journalism, let's do it well. Mm. You brought out, can you please put on TV the circular that CBN released? Mm. What I was asking the Daily Trust newspaper was, was that this when they released their story? Was that what? The circular? No, there wasn't a circular. No, so there was no circular. Mm. So what I'm saying invariably is there was no circular. You say you spoke to people. Hope you know, Rotus, that is not today that people have, as of April, people bought on that INE window at 670, 680. Okay. It's not today. So you it, agree it was well, today at 670? Wait, wait, wait. Yes, now. Okay. If you go and read even the business uh, day story. Yeah. What the business day story was saying, Rotu, was that for a while, for months back, mm. people have been trading for over 600 on that window. Yeah. What I'm saying, and this was my grouse against daily trust is, have your facts. Now with this circular printed by CBN, you can back it up and say the CBN as officially, but not based on the perception of one or two people by saying that the CBN was official. Because if you, if you had to report that then, why didn't you report it in April when it traded for that amount? Okay, so, so what I'm just saying is, get, let's get our facts right. Because see, we are the arbiter. We are the gatekeepers. Do you what agree? is he backing up your facts? Okay, wait. Well, I just told you that the CBN was manipulating the rates and pushing it back at 470. Was there an official statement to that effect? That's oh, what we're asking you. Okay, so uh, oh wait, are you was, that's what we're asking. Was there an official statement, Rotus? Okay, so now you're to saying that, that effect. I get you. As yeah. long as there were no official statement, then it, was, it fell flat on his feet. It's okay, as so simple as that. I get is it today we know that CBN is manipulating the rates? Okay, so it's if, not today we know now. Well, fine. If you ask, if you admit that the CBN is manipulating the rates, then why are you saying it's not a fact that it was closing at there was trading? at 6 30. did the cbn officially come out to say value the they, value they are the they are the invisible Wait, hand there Rotus, that were manipulating Rotus, the Rotus. rates when we argue let's argue sensibly yeah did the cbn officially release a circular like this to devalue of when course daily trust of course they won't release a circular because on. they are the ones moving yeah, the rates the rates right. moved at 6 30. you cannot uh, you cannot <laughs> see you cannot escape from, you can't can say can you can't we, it's like the fox can't. guarding the hen house you can't expect the cbn to come out with the okay, circular okay. when they are the ones manipulating okay. the rates okay you can't do that not a dialogue. This is, a, right ahead. This is a panel. The daily, <laughs> the, 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 the daily trust has been vindicated. The let's, daily let's, trust let's was right. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, Rotus. go ahead. Thank you. And thank for that was the thought came to mind as well when I heard the story that it, um, I, I remember the daily trust um, information, even though it was pre, you know, it, it had come pre. But let me move on to the unification and the effect on our debts mm. and servicing and our revenue. I, I would like you to just discuss yeah. the few um, analysis around what the import of that would be. Mm. And then in terms of also the um, reality for Nigerians in terms of um, the cost of price, its effect on inflation, food inflation, especially because we are an import dependent nation. And yeah. so a number of things so that the ordinary person who's watching will understand what it means for them. And then also from a business perspective, mm. yesterday you spoke to Yinko Shifeso of yeah. Orikilewa and you spoke about how, what's the impact on small businesses, especially when they have to source for Forex to get their products if they were ready for the shocks, if they were prepared, mm. how it's going to affect. So yeah. I'd like us to examine that because I, I believe that's what's on the mind of a number of people yeah. this morning. So in terms of um, businesses, Nigerians should get ready for price hikes in certain areas. Definitely. I think food, um, certainly. Um, I also think it's an opportunity. So whilst uh, thinking about this, um, the unification, 
the threats and the opportunities. Of course, the threat is in the immediate. We're going to face price hikes. The opportunities for this government is, and, I'm, and I think they are towing the right you know, line at the moment, is mm. there are other provisions that ought to be made. So if we're going to make gains from this, this is a great time to actually have an enabling environment for businesses. Yeah. They've talked about other issues that affect their power, issues around security um, and, and the likes. This is an opportunity for them to do this alongside the unification if we're going to have a balance in that area. And then also um, in terms of import dependent on or export, one a mono economy with oil. Yeah. What are the plans of the president to diversify our revenue source mm. so that we are able to get FX through other sources beyond oil? This has been. And then I also hope that they will also address the issue of oil theft. Okay. Because that is something, yeah. you know, when we, when we look at um, 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 FX, we need to look at why we are being drained in terms of, in terms of funds. Yeah. So those are the kind of conversations we need to start having and also sensitizing Nigerians to get ready for the initial shocks. But in the long run, it's going to be for the benefit so, of all. So there won't be a shock. The reason why there won't be a shock is that the, we've, when the 41 item ban list was, was put out, it so essentially told everyone to go to the parallel market and source for your FX. We've been sourcing at the parallel market at 750, 760 okay. levels already. So this this rate you're seeing at 664, yeah. that's that's not even what's on the parallel market at that time. So that's not that I don't see a, a shock um, at this time because we have already sourcing the market at a higher rate already. Remember, this was just an announcement that was made. Yeah. So we need to see a convergence between the irony window and the um, the the what's happening on the black market right yeah. now. We should re reduce arbitrage on the fact on revenue and debt. Our debt is a hundred billion dollars. If you price that debt at uh, 4674. You get your what's in the trillions, but if you price it at seven closer to the INE window, your debt is going to go up because you are repricing your debt at a higher at a higher figure. Your other points are well made in terms of um, having to end oil theft, increase revenue, increase some um, production in order to bring in more FX into the nation. The yeah. issue now is FX supply. If foreign investors, foreign portfolio investors believe that this rate is is if free free determination of the rates can be, can happen, then we'll get more FX inflows coming into uh, the country. Okay, what are the experts saying? I think it's important to benchmark the conversation with what the experts are saying. Mm. And I've read in the papers views expressed by Dr. Nwausu, by Obadimu, by Taiwo Yedele, by uh, John Sinchuku, by Muda Yusuf, by Bismarck Remwane. And these are persons who should know because this is their concern. Now, the second thing to also ask is that, to, to point out is, this is one of those promises that uh, President Tinubu made during the campaign. So another promise made, another promise kept. What has also happened is in line with, you know, what the uh, IMF and the World Bank and other analysts have been asking for, that it's unorthodox to have, you know, several windows uh, for your forex because it creates room for, you know, opaqueness, lack of transparency, mm. arbitrage, and all of that. So what the government has now done uh, through the CBN is to eliminate multiple windows and say, OK, you trade in the IRNA window. Everybody, including people who are looking for BTA, who are looking for PTA, who are looking for uh, funds for medicals, or you want to be a, a uh, you want to import anything within the economy. The effect of that, the immediate effect of that, as the uh, you know, experts pointed out, was devaluation to the degree of about 40.97%. Right. The argument about what Daily Trust wrote, what Daily Trust did, did not write is totally immaterial. Mm. We're confronted with a new reality now that will affect all of us. It means that the Forex market, the IRNA window, will depend simply on market forces. Mm. The Naira is now on a free float, <laughs> and the forces of demand and supply will apply. One of the experts is saying that you have to manage supply, which you pointed out. But if demand is so high, then of course you are likely to buy, uh, you know, forex at a higher rate. So balancing that uh, link between demand and supply will be the major challenge. All of them, Oyedele uh, Mwausu, uh, Rewane, Johnson Chuku, they all agree, however, that this is good for investment that it will attract investors. It will also help government to get higher revenue and address its deficit. But the only part of the conversation that concerns uh, ordinary Nigerians like us is that how does this affect payment of school fees? Mm. 
For fees example, are, they're going to go up. Your school fees are going to be more expensive. <laughs> so, 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 your school fees are so going up. So we pay more. Uh, we, we pay more. Pay, people who have uh, children abroad, you know, who have to uh, look for more money to be able oh, to yes. pay school fees. People who need PTA, who yeah. need P PTA. Mm -hmm. we, we are told that you will have to still go through. The, the same you still have to go through the deposit money banks, yep. uh, but if it's market forces, but in up. any case, yep. if it's going to be for the good of Nigeria, mm -hmm. then it's something uh, to be welcomed. However, there is another issue I wanted to bring up, but we don't have time, and that will be President Buhari again fulfilling another promise, signing the Data Protection Bill. President, President, Tinubu. Tinubu. Hey, President, Tinubu. President, Tinubu. President Tinubu. Not Buhari. Or okay, don't worry. It's, it's the Buhari hangover. <laughs> Not, I think it's the school fees. <laughs> yes, the school fees. That's messed up stuff. The school fees high. Thank you so much. Thank Rogers. you so much. Thank you. For Global <laughs> Business Update, Michael Wilson joins us now from London. Good morning, Michael. Good morning. Um, as, as far as the Asia Pacific markets are concerned, they're, they're looking at what happened in the Fed yesterday. It's very interesting, actually. So the, head, the Fed, rather, uh, paused their rate hikes, but it was, to all intents and purposes, a hawkish pause. In other words, I mean, this is a new kind of phrase, isn't it? But I think what it means is that what they were warning about was two further rises um, to come. And New Zealand has gone into a technical uh, recession, 0.1% in two quarters. Um, the Nikkei is up, though, and the Hang Seng is also up. As far as China's concerned, this is interesting. And I, I think I think the, the, the central authorities there are gradually moving towards um, a, a loosening of the economy to try to help it. Um, the, the People's Bank of China um, lowered, uh, lowered a rate on uh, what, what, what effectively is 33 Three billion dollars worth of borrowing um, by by ten basis points. The last time they did that was in August, twenty two. If you remember earlier this week, seven of the uh, the, the seven day repo rate was cut, and also last week, um, major ch seven mi major Chinese banks actually cut their deposit rates as well. Um, th they've had some fairly disturbing um, news out of their employment youth unemployment has risen um quite considerably up by 20.8 percent now this is not because they can't find jobs this is more because too many or a lot of people have been going to university and then finding when they come out of university there aren't the jobs there that they feel themselves qualified um to actually uh, take at the moment um and uh, the, the 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 growth rate should be round about five percent by the end of 2023 Three, but China will struggle to get there. It will get there, but it will be a struggle, apparently. Um, just going to the overall region, it's likely that Asia will outperform um, the US and the EU in terms of their economies as well. Um, they're looking at um, a growth of the area of about four and a half percent total and average growth, that is. Um, India, Indonesia and Japan um, are the standouts, really, in where the growth figures actually are. Not the size of their economies, but the growth, um, which, which actually would be quite high. Let's go back to the United States, where we, we started, and, and that... Um, Futures really not massively doing anything uh, th th this morning. Um, as I said, the Fed skipped an interest rate hike, but um, it paused itself. Um, it, it paused itself quite dramatically and was in no hesitation to say that there would be more interest rate rises to come. And we see the jobless figures today. I'll be talking about that later with Rotus and, of course, retail sales in, in the United States. Um, and Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates um, is talking to Xi Jinping. He's actually going, going to China. He's in China right now. This is the first time that a senior business person has actually talked to the president of China since 2019 because of all the lockdowns. Let's turn our attention to the European Union and France. And France is bidding to become the sort of hub of, of, of AI regulation. Yes, the G7 and OECD, it acknowledges, are talking about it. But French President Macron is actually hoping that France will be the centre of all this. Um, this is because of the AI supposed wars that have broken out 
particularly the introduction of chat GPT and so on. That's gone viral. So this, they're talking about an artificial intelligence arms race. What effect this will have? Still, nobody really knows. But France is pitching itself to be the centre of that, that kind of um, discussion about regulation. Um, separately, the ECB um, will announce at lunchtime today it's expected that interest rates will rise by one quarter of one percent there, 25 basis points, so three and a half percent. Um, annual inflation has fallen very slightly from 10.6 to 6.1 percent year on year as far as May can. So we also get the France CPI figures as well. So a whole host of stuff coming out of um, Europe today. Um, the Paris Air Show next week. Now, the reason I mentioned this is because we've already seen big orders from Air India, Ryanair and, other, and, and some other some Middle East carriers as well. It's expected to be an absolute bonanza, not only only because of the growth in air travel, but also because of clearly um, de defence uh, talk as well, um, uh, particularly because of Russia and Ukraine and, and so on. Um, in the UK, um, the Prime Minister is under increased pressure. This is a deal. This deal has been sealed with the, with the network called Three, but... The fact of the matter is that this will be such a huge UK supplier of mobile telephony, 27 million customers. This is bound to attract the attention of the regulators. So it's not a done deal, but the deal has been signed, but still has got, I suspect, probably got quite a long way to go. As far as oil is concerned, um, I won't bother you with the oil price so much, but rather to say that Shell has announced that today that it's investing up to $10 billion in electrical vehicle um, recharging units throughout Asia. So it's putting itself very much at the forefront of trying to convert from oil and gas, although it does say that the demand of that will continue. And as far as gold's concerned, well, I'm sorry, gold traders, but it's still stuck in a trade of between 1940 and $1980 an ounce. That's the global view. Well, thank you very much, Michael. Unfortunately, we are out of time, so we can't take the conversation further. We we'll look forward to seeing you later on in the day with Rotis and, of course, tomorrow morning for uh, the morning show.